On my recent ski trip to Copper Mountain, I used a GPS application to track my position and speed throughout the day. Here you can see my statistics from Wednesday, March 21st. I recorded for a little under 3 hours and in that time I skied 8.3 miles and reached speeds over 44 miles per hour. The really cool thing about this is the GPS data can be imported into Google Earth where I can then relive the day as a 3D fly-through. Let's take a look and see what this means. My tracks are shown in yellow superimposed on a satellite image of the ski area. You can also see all the ski areas runs, there are the pale areas cutting through the darker green of the trees. I've manually marked all the chairlifts. They're represented here by red lines. And I've also indicated all the blue intermediate and black advanced slopes. So let's put that all together, add a snowy background and a few labels, and we are ready to fly. I'd already skied a few warm-up runs before I turned on the tracker, so this trip starts at around 10.45 with me getting on the Super B chairlift. Super B is a 1.8 mile long six-seater high-speed lift which takes about 10 minutes to ascend 2,267 vertical feet. To my left is a long bump-filled run called Too Much, which looks rather interesting. But for my next descent, I'm eyeing a couple of nicely groomed black runs on my right. They are called Overload and Roses Run. The top of Super B is at 11,982 feet. I'm going to get off to the left and head straight back down to the bottom. The descent starts with a couple of blue runs. First, Andy's Encore, then I bear left and take a collage. Next, I cut right onto Overload and right again onto Rose's run. This brings me back down to the bottom of Super B. From the top of Super B I can get into an area known as Union Bowl. I'm planning on taking a look at a double black diamond run called Triple Zero that runs down into Union Bowl. Generally speaking, bowls provide more challenges than the regular slopes, so I may be pushing my luck trying this one. It's been quite a while since I last skied anything quite this challenging, and uh, I'm out of shape and uh, out of practice. But we'll see what happens. Access to runs in Union Bowl are through gates, so I need to get off the, this lift uh, to the left and then bear right to make sure that the gate that I want is open. Much to my surprise, it had all been groomed. Triple Zero leads down to a single black diamond run called Crosscut, and there was absolutely nothing challenging on either one. Union Bowl is south facing, and it was a warm day, so the snow was a little heavy in places. But all in all, this was an easy run down to Resolution Chairlift. OK, so that's what Triple Zero and Crosscut look like in the simulation. But now let's take a look at the real thing as taken from my helmet camera.
to him, hadn't I? This is it, must be something familiar to him. To be tackled, isn't it? But actually, this is pretty easy going. So far I don't see what's double what about it. Steep in places really, but nothing special. up on the side here. It smells nice and soft and there's really nothing to it. Okay, thanks. Going well. Smile for the camera. You've been recorded. Glad you're recording. Okay. Work out here, though. Yeah, indeed. Yes, I'm impressed. Take it easy. You too. Bye. Resolution is a fairly slow lift, um, about nine minutes for 0.8 of a mile, but on the way up I had the chance to check out three black runs to the right, uh, High Line, Sawtooth and Cabin Chute. Well, they looked as though nobody had skied them that day, so I was getting, guessing that their gates were closed. However, I was still determined to find some bumps somewhere, so I turned right off the top and found that uh, the gate to drain pipe was open, so I checked in there, but man, it was it was ugly, very, very rocky, so I cut out on a blue uh, slot car track which took me round to the front side of the mountain. From there I crossed far east and then turned right uh, onto Too Much, the run that I've been eyeing earlier in the day. It lived up to its name. <laughs> it was 1.2 miles of ugly, ugly moguls. Survival mode skiing all the way down and I was very happy to see Alpine Chair at the bottom. By this time I was starting to get hungry and thinking about lunch. I'd arranged to meet Lukey at Centre Village. Now Alpine Chair starts in East Village so I had to go up and find my way back down the mountain uh, making sure that I hit Centre Village. Alpine takes 11 and a half minutes to climb 1650 feet. From the top I turned right and set out on Andy's Encore, a blue run and hanging lefts where possible, looking for Bouncer, another blue run that would take me down to Centre Village. 
At some point on this run, I hit my maximum speed for the day, just over 44 miles per hour. As I approached the bottom, I thought that maybe I could just get one more run in before lunchtime, so I hopped onto American Eagle and headed for the top. From American Eagle, I dropped down to the accelerator chairlift and took that up to round about the 12,000 foot mark. Off the top of accelerator, you can see the top of Super B to the, uh, to the left. But I headed down a couple of black runs, CDLS and Trail 20 and then cut across to the left uh, to go under the American Eagle chair looking for a blue run called Bittersweet. Bittersweet takes me round to Bouncer, which I caught earlier in the day, you'll recall and Bouncer will take me right down to where I want to be. And finally, here's that last run down seen from my helmet cam.